the one who have unlimited source of grace, mercy, and blessings. All matters will return to him. And Allah is well aware and know and record everything that we all do. I bear witness there is no creator except Allah, the one and only with no partners, the almighty and a sure truth. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the servant and messenger of Allah, my dear brothers and sisters of Islam. Our talk today, inshallah, is about some of the Quranic verses which guide the servants of Allah to the fact that he, the Almighty, is watchful over all of us and know what we do in public and what we do in secret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 235, Know that Allah knows what is in your heart, so beware of him. Allah knows what's in your heart, so beware of him, Allah the Almighty. Allah also said, surely Allah is ever watching over you, as Allah is well aware of your deed and nothing, nothing can be hidden from him. Allah also said, he knows the betrayal of the eye, the wink, the deceit, the treason of the eye, that's just a little movement of the eyes, and whatever is concealed in your heart. Allah knows when you look at what is prohibited or winking with the eye to put some else, some, somebody down. Imam Mujahid said the betrayal of the eye is to steal a look to what is prohibited. Just a small moment. Imam Qatada also said it is the blink of the eye and move it in what Allah prohibits and what Allah does not like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said in Surah Qaf, we really, we verily created man and we know what, is his, what his soul whispers to him. For we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. Behold, two guardian angels appointed to learn his doing, learn and note his doing, one sitting on the right and one on the left. Not a word, not a word does he utters. But there is an observer by him ready to note it, ready to record it. The observer, the description of those two angels, the observer is the one who is steadfast in watching your deed and being ready is well prepared to record what you do of good and bad deeds. Many other verses indicate and alert all of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of all our affairs, sees our intentions, and know what we are even don't know about ourselves. He created us, and he knows exactly who we are. Many other verses indicate and alert to all of us that Allah is well aware of all our affairs, sees our intention, and know what we even don't know about ourselves. My dear brothers and sisters, the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly reminded us of the fact that he is watching over us is to alert us is to make us consciously aware that to be sincere and to be truthful in our deeds and judge ourselves before we act or commit a sin he who is always consciously aware that Allah is watching over his deed will be more up to follow Allah's boundaries and guidance. He who ponder the names of Allah and worship him accordingly, know and is certain that Allah hears and sees, know the secrets and what is hidden, will always be cautious, guiding himself, watchful what he does and what he leaves. That state of consciously awareness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over you will make you, as we all say, walk the thin line. Make the choices and be watchful that there is somebody is actually knowledgeable and sees everything. Imam al-Hasan al-Basri recited the verse, Behold two guardian angels appointed to learn your deed, learn and note them. One sitting on the right and one on the left, not a word does he utter, but there is an observer by him ready to record it. Then he said, he recited that verse. Then Al-Hasr al-Basri said, Son of Adam, 
a book is assigned to you, as well as two honorable angels, one on the right and one on the left. The one on the left record your bad deeds, and the one on the right records your good deed. So do what you choose. Do, it's your choice. It's always your doing. Nobody push you either way. But the trick that you know, that there is two angels, one on the right and one on the left, are ready to record everything. So choose what you want to do. Then he added, when you die, your book will be closed and attached to your neck as you are placed in your grave and until you are restored to life on the day of judgment. And at that moment, in the day of judgment, Allah will say, and we have fastened every man's. We have fastened every man's deeds to his neck. And on the day of resurrection, we shall bring out for him a book which will be, will be wide open. It will be said to him, read your record. Read your record. You yourself are sufficient this day to make out an account against your own. You are your own judge. It is your deed. It's what you said. It's what you did. Everything you recorded. And you are sufficient to hold an account against your deed. Then Al-Hasan al-Basri said, By Allah, and he swear by Allah, the Almighty, the Merciful, it is honorable and just. It is honorable and just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heaven of the earth, he who makes you your own judge, Allah makes you your own judge. There is no more justice and goodness and mercy than that. So be smart. Be smart and be keen. Giving your accompanying angel a break from writing by being, by being consciously aware that Allah knows your deed and what's in your heart. And do not belittle small talk, saying what's, in, saying what's not in your heart or pleasing people, sacrificing the divine guidance and the boundaries of Allah. Know the might of he who is overlooking you. Know the might, the strength, the ability, the wisdom of he who is overlooking you. Be truthful in what you say here, where you are looking to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what, what's about you, what you don't know, what you, what you don't know even about yourself. That is the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among the precious advice of the scholar, what is narrated by Abi Abdullah ibn, ibn Fattak, that he said, and listen for these beautiful words of those scholars who ponder the Quran as they recite it and ponder the verses of Allah when he talks to all of us. He said, if you are about to do a deed, if you are about to do a deed, then ponder that Allah is looking at you. And if you are about to say something, then ponder that Allah is hearing you. And if you are, and if you are silent, then ponder that Allah knows what's in your heart. Then he recited the verses from the Quran that Allah said, For I am with you and, and, and I hear you and I see everything. Surah Taha. And also said, recited what Allah said, know that Allah knows what's in your heart, so beware of him, beware of Allah. Know, my dear brothers and sisters, that he who interacts with the Almighty, with truth, and being mindful of his presence in secret, Allah will raise his rank and place the love for him in the heart of others. And he who is interacting with Allah, with deceits, lies, and being only mindful of people, descend to the rank of those who do not have a mind, do not have a brain to comprehend, do not have a brain to save their own soul, and will experience insult and humiliation after experiencing honor and goodness. Among what's also narrated by the, by the treatment of those who belittle, who belittle the fact is Allah is seeing and aware of all our deeds, Imam al-Tabarani al-Bayhaqi Abu Naim narrated on the authority of, of, of Uday, Uday ibn, ibn Hatim, may God be pleased with him, that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, on the day of judgment, a group of people are ordered to go to heaven, and as they approach it, look at it, smell its aroma, 
and see what's prepared for its residents. They will be called back. They will be called to turn around as they will not have any share in all that luxury and all that enjoyment. The Prophet continues saying, they go, they go back in complete disappointment, which no one has experienced before. They say, our Lord, if you admit us to the hellfire before you made us experience your rewards and what you are prepared for, for, for in heaven for your righteous follower, it would be a little bit easier for us. If you didn't see us, so show us all this beauty and all this excitement and all this goodness before you admit us to the hellfire, it will be a little bit easy of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond, that's exactly what I want you to experience. As in secret, you challenge me. As in secret, you challenge me committing major sins. And before people, you show meekness and you show goodness. You show off goodness before people which is opposite of what you show me in your heart Allah know what's in your heart you feared people and you did not fear me you honor people and you did not honor me and you give up for the sake of people what you did not give up for my sake today I gave you a, sta a taste of a severe punishment along those who are deprived my mercy and my rewards. My dear brothers and sisters, if you see this humiliating treatment being expelled in dishonor from Allah's mercy, very shameful and very hurtful, then know it is a treatment which is suitable, which is equal and fit for those who belittle the might of Allah or being a disbeliever altogether. Those who belittle the fact that Allah is over, 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 looking at us, watching us. Actually, those or who belittle that deserve such a treatment. Or those who actually all disbelieve are altogether definitely deserve such humiliation. Humayd al-Tawil said, If you disobey Allah in secret, if you disobey Allah in secret and you know and you see and you know, and, and you know that he sees you. If you disobey Allah in secret and you know that he sees you, then you transgressed in huge matter. You transgressed against Allah in a big matter. And if you think he doesn't see you, then you are a disbeliever altogether. Let us all reflect and see where we are, where we are among these two, among these two characters. Then do what you want and say what you want. May Allah make us among those who apply and comprehend what we hear. Assalamu alaikum.